When it comes to global environmental problems that the world came together to fix, there's one stellar success story. The hole in the ozone layer. So how did we cause and then heal the ozone hole? In 1928, a US chemist synthesized a family of non-toxic, non-flammable chemicals called chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs to safely use as coolants. Until then, refrigeration used toxic coolants like ammonia and methyl chloride. So CFCs were hailed as a miracle find. By the 1970s, these chemicals were used everywhere. In refrigerators and air conditioners, of course, but also in deodorants, hairspray, bug spray and paint, styrofoam packaging and fire extinguishers. Nearly 1 million metric tons of CFCs were being produced annually, worth about $1 billion in annual sales. But high above the earth, CFCs were creating an unrecognized problem. In the stratosphere, an atmospheric region extending from roughly 8 to 50 kilometers above our planet's surface is a layer of ozone that's vital to protecting life. Ozone molecules act as the Earth's sunscreen. They absorb harmful ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun, preventing it from reaching our planet's surface. A reduced ozone layer would mean more sunburn, a higher risk of skin cancer, and increasing environmental harm. In 1974, researchers Frank Sherwood Rowland and Mario Molina suggested that while CFCs were harmless in the lower atmosphere, they had a long lifespan and could float about for 40 to 150 years. The CFC molecules could eventually drift up into the stratosphere where ultraviolet radiation would break them down, creating free chlorine atoms. These atoms would then instantly react with ozone, setting off a chain reaction and causing the ozone layer to thin. This idea quickly gained more scientific backing. In 1978, countries including the US, Canada, Norway and Sweden banned non-essential aerosols which used CFCs. But CFC production still continued for refrigerants and other uses. However, chemical companies like DuPont, a major CFC manufacturer, denied the link, saying no ozone depletion had ever been detected. They demanded conclusive proof. This proof came quickly. In 1985, British scientists who had been measuring total ozone over the Antarctic since 1957 revealed an extremely worrying finding. There was 40% less ozone above the southern hemisphere in the spring months of September and October compared to 10 years earlier. NASA satellite data soon confirmed that the ozone layer was thinning, that there was indeed a growing hole in the ozone layer over Antarctica. This image of a growing polar ozone hole allowing the entry of harmful cancer-causing radiation was a simple and powerful one. Public pressure to fix the hole rose dramatically and governments started discussing ways to do it. In 1987, the world's countries came together to create the landmark Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. This treaty detailed how signatory nations would phase out the use of ozone-depleting chemicals while monitoring and reporting their steps to protect the ozone layer. CFC production was ultimately banned in 197 countries and amendments to the Montreal Protocol were put in place to phase out other ozone layer damaging chemicals. In 1988, DuPont backpedaled and agreed to phase out CFC manufacturing by the early 2000s. Studies show that the Montreal Protocol has largely worked. The levels of ozone damaging chemicals manufactured dropped steadily over the years and their production has ceased. Thanks to these efforts, the ozone hole has been slowly shrinking on average annually. In fact, if all nations continue meeting their treaty obligations, some estimates suggest the ozone hole could cease to exist by 2065. However, resolving the ozone hole problem has created new issues. 
One of the most prominent CFC replacements is a group of compounds called hydrofluorocarbons or HFCs. These are safe for the ozone layer but create a new difficulty. HFCs are potent greenhouse gases with some warming the climate much more effectively than carbon dioxide. In 2016, 170 countries signed the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol agreeing to phase out HFC use by 85% over 30 years. By January 2021, 110 countries and the European Union had ratified the Kigali Amendment. Today, the steady healing of the ozone layer represents a story of strong global cooperation and commitment. Scientists demonstrated how a useful industrial chemical hailed as a miracle product was harming the planet and threatening our lives. Nations responded decisively to curb that threat. The hope today is that humanity can come together to solve similar big environmental problems like climate change and biodiversity loss.